God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. He that believeth on the Son has everlasting life. He that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abiding upon him. Today, as this nation celebrates Independence Day from England, not many of you know that, you can celebrate your independence from Satan, from hell, and from sin by coming to the Lord Jesus Christ and being saved, having your sins washed in the blood of the Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. You can have independence from Satan. You can have independence from your sins and be washed in the blood of the Lamb. To be cleansed by God. For God loves you enough that He sent His only Son to take your place. To give you the sacrifice offering that's approved of God. Church membership is not what God wants. Cash, check, or money order, or credit is not what God wants. Being a good person is not what God wants. He wants you to put your faith and your trust in the gospel of His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, that Jesus died for our sins according to the Scriptures. And they buried him. And he arose again the third day according to the scriptures. That is the gospel. That is the good news sent by God. That you can be saved from your sin. Listen, there's only one sin that will put you into hell. Rejecting what Jesus Christ has done for you upon Calvary's hill. The Bible says in Romans 6.23, the wages of sin is death. You will die. You don't know when. You don't know how. But death is coming. And death may be this morning. Before you die, you have to make an important decision about your life. And it's not career, it's not presidential candidate, it's not family. It's will you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved, or will you trust in your own condemnation? John chapter 3 says, He that believeth on him is not condemned. When you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, there's no condemnation. But he that believeth not is condemned already. John 3.18 You are already condemned by God for rejecting Jesus Christ as your Savior. As we stand here according to Mark 16, go ye in all the world and preach the gospel, you are without excuse. Because of this loud mouth, you can never tell God, I never heard, I had no idea. So I will tell you what you need to do to be saved. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, Acts 16.31, and thou shalt be saved. No works, not of works, least any man should boast. Salvation is of God, the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says, prepare to meet thy God. You better meet him with the precious blood than rather what you else are trusting in. 
In order to go to heaven, you've got to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. How do you get to hell? Do anything else, don't do anything else. There is a hell. God our Creator told us in the Scriptures. All well is not well because there is a hell. Your own words profess that there is a hell. When you tell someone, go to hell, why would you tell them to go to a imaginary place? Hell is not a party. Hell is so serious that God sent His Son to pay for our sin debt that we may not go to hell, to prevent us from going to hell, for giving us a way out of hell. Upon the gospel that Jesus died for our sins, was buried, and arose again, according to the Scripture. Now, the wages of sin is death. You know how you know you're a sinner? You will die. You know what the Bible says about your death? You're a sinner. Because of sin is, is the reason for death. A death certificate should have already printed in the cause of death, sin, Romans 6.23. Now, whether it was cancer, whether it was OD, whether it was being hit by a bus, whether it was natural causes, that's immature of the situation that sin causes death. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. There is none righteous, no, not one. And I'm speaking to you. I am speaking to me. I'm just a saved sinner. Saved by grace. If I confess my sins, He is faithful and just to forgive me of my sins. 1 John 1, 9. If you were to confess your sins, He is faithful and just to, to forgive you of your sins. 1 John 1, 9. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, because I have believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. Believing on Him is I'm not condemned, John 3.18. But he that believeth not is condemned already. See, you're not going to hell. You're already there. You just need to be plucked out by the blood. See, stealing, lying, won't get you to hell. That'll get you death. Going to hell is by rejecting Jesus Christ as your Savior because you steal, because you lie. <coughs> we are all sinners. What are you going to do with your sin? What will you do with your sin? Does God have a little, little menu board? One lie costs this. Stealing costs that. No, we don't. He has the precious blood of Lord Jesus Christ to cleanse you from your sins. Nothing else. You can't say, oh, I went to prison and paid. No, that's not the eyes of God. Matter of fact, if you read the Old Testament, most of the people that are in prisons today, under the Old Testament law, the Levitical law, they'd probably be stoned. Capital punishment for most of those crimes. And yet, mercy and grace is set forth by God, for God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Now, on this July 4th weekend, you can have independence from God by rejecting Jesus Christ and go to hell. You can independent yourself away from God. I advise you 
not to. The Bible suggests that you do not. The Bible says that Jesus says, John 3, 3, ye must be born again, and yet God gives you a free will to choose. God is not going to force salvation down you. And not everybody's going to go to heaven. That's a lie from Satan. Purgatory is a lie of Satan. You are washed in the blood of Jesus Christ or you are lost. Without Jesus Christ, the gospel, you will burn in hell. And you will burn in hell forever and ever. You see, in hell you pay for your sins where Jesus has already paid for them. So you can choose Jesus to wash in your sins by His blood and be saved and be absent from the body and be present with the Lord. Or you can choose to have your own sins paid by flames and fire of hell. And there's no escape once you enter into hell. And yet, this Independence Day weekend, you can celebrate your independence from Satan, from sin, by believing in the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. You can have your name put in the Lamb's Book of Life and be saved. And then when you die, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God's eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. It's that simple. There's no other way. And the way that God has set forth, the way that God has set forth is the simplest way. And when Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, no man cometh unto the Father but by me. See, if I were to ask you, do you want to go to heaven? A normal, sane answer would be yes. If I were to ask you, how would you get to heaven? The answers would be vast and wide and separate and far apart. Yet the Bible, the King James 1611 Bible says that Jesus says, I am the way. That takes care of your way. That takes care of your religion. That takes care of your work. For Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father, but by me. Death is so serious. That Jesus left heaven to head to a hill called Calvary to be brutally treated and brutally killed that His precious blood may wash us of our sins. How you doing? Congratulations. Thank you. You know, I'm a street evangelist. All right. My name is Brian. How you doing? How you doing? Thanks, guys. Appreciate your work. Yep. Good message, bro. I just keep on going. Just try to tell them week after week the gospel. Can I give you a point there? What's that? Since I've won many, many souls on the street. Amen. It's hard when you're raising your voice on a microphone, because I've done it. It's hard to come across with sweet of the Holy Spirit. Okay? So I'll try being a little sweeter. Because I just took a little call and I stood there and I was going, well, it's not nasty. He's 
preaching the gospel the way it's supposed to be done. You're a sinner. Jesus loves you just the way you are. I was waiting for an invitation while I was over there. Uh, would anybody like to receive Jesus as their Lord and Savior? Is anybody sick out there? Oh, Jesus indeed. But you know that and I know that. So the softness and the sweetness, which you know is scriptural. You know, we also do in season out of season two, right, bro? <laughs> Can't even tell you some of the stories of these. I just crossed the nation with my RV over there. Just to point out what you're doing is outrageously good. Sweeten it. And don't forget the invite for the soul. Because yep. the bottom line is you're out here so Yep. Right? And like Jesus said in his first uh his first ministry when he went into the synagogue, he said, Listen, I've come to heal the broken. There are so many broken hearts. I, I deal in the, the drug and the street and stuff like that. I'm telling you, I cry every day, bro. Uh, every, it's just rampant. Uh, but their hearts have been wounded. That's why Jesus first said, I've come to heal the broken heart. And then he said, set the captive free. Right? Now, the Son of God's walking around, and at that time, he knew he was the Son of God, right? And uh, this is what he's taught us. Be courageous to not only invite him over in gentleness and sweetness, and preach your message in gentleness and sweetness. Of course, in today's day and age, like I said, I know it's hard when you're raising your voice to sound sweet, but you can do it. Of course, a lot of what you do in your tone of voice is turning people off. And uh, there's part of us who says, well, it doesn't really matter because they got to hear the Word of God. Right? But we're fishermen. See, when I go out fishing, I don't take uh, a grenade and throw it out there, unless I had to, right? <laughs> I use a good bait. The sweetness and the softness in today's day and age is what they are receiving because everybody's been hurt. Yeah, the, the sweetness and softness and sugarness is where we are. I didn't say sugarness. I said You said be sweet. I and said sweetness. It's like this. If I had a microphone, I would say let them know that, you know, Jesus loves you just the way you are, just the situation. No, he don't. In. He don't love them the way they are. Sinners rejecting what God has done for them. He is angry with them, and unless they repent and get right, they're going to burn in hell. The condemnation is, they need to believe on Jesus Christ as their Savior. And this thing where okay, God, so God hates the sin and loves the sinner, that, that's ridiculous. That's well, ridiculous. It's, it's the truth. That's why he said to the chief on the cross, you know, he didn't... He didn't yeah, so talk about the thief on the cross. Where was the invitation for that thief to trust on Jesus? There was no invitation. There was no invitation. He simply the guy came and said, you know what? Hey, I'm wrong. The Holy Spirit convicted okay. that thief. Now, I'm about to leave because you are you seem to be the type that likes to argue. I just said if you used a little sweetness, don't forget the invitation, and have the courage to use the name of Jesus to heal the people because you got to get. I use Isaiah 1, verse 18 for the invitation where God says, Come ye out, come. That verse right there, you know, God is inviting you. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to anger you. I'm not angry, I'm just telling no, you. sure sound like well, <laughs> I'm sorry. No problem. I just wanted to give you a point of yep. course. What you're that's doing, your everyday you voice. know you stuff. That's my everyday voice. Yeah, change it. Get well, a little sweeter, buddy. Well, you'll, sweet. You'll be you know more, what? I'm just saying you'll you see be my more foot? effective. See my foot? Yeah. That's because of people. The diabetic ulcer. That's because it's too much sweet. Je Jesus, Jesus said, "Be soft." Can I pray over you? For what? To heal. For Jesus to heal it right now. I know. I know. I'm praying over it right now, and I'm going to ask Jesus to heal you right now. All right. Holy Father, in the name of Jesus, I command this illness to leave. Jesus, it's your name. And in the name of Jesus, it is done. Amen. No three part. No, no. no song of harmony. No. In the name of Jesus. Amen. I am above all names. Dude. Yeah. See you again, okay? All right. Come on back down. See you soon. All right. For God so loved.
loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. That is love. People say God is love. There it is. True love is sacrificing. What I can do for you, not what you can do for me. See, lust, it's when I go out and try to find somebody who can meet my needs only. But when God says, He gave His only begotten Son, That is the beginning of the sacrifice before Calvary. When Jesus spoke to the Father and said, after Adam sinned, Father, I will go down there and I will take their place. I will shed my blood. I will die upon that tree that they may have life. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. You are born to die. Jesus was born to save. And in that he died. And was buried. And arose again. The third day according to the scriptures. That is the invitation to salvation that God has wrought for you. To go to heaven has already been done, has already been accomplished by God. You've got to believe and put your faith and your trust. If you don't, if you will not believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, you will not have life. He that believeth on the Son has everlasting life. He that believeth not the Son shall not see life but the wrath of God abiding upon him. It's either life or wrath. And I'm sorry that my message is not sugary. But if you read the Old Testament law, you know what went on the sacrifices in abundance? It says in the law that God says, you know, you put the salt. And you put more salt. Jesus said, be salt of the earth. There are sugar-coated preachers out there not doing nothing to get you out of hell. They're just getting your pocketbook. You're getting them to, to buy their books, their tapes. But we stand here and show you what God really expects from you. He expects you to have independence from Satan, from hell, from sin, by His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. the cleansing power. Have you been to the blood to be washed from your sins? What can cleanse me from my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Yeah. Salvation is a bloody message. 
The blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sin. See, the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God's eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Now, salvation is not going to stop you from dying. But salvation will make it when you die, the Bible says, to be absent from the body and present with the Lord. Whereas without Jesus, and the rich man died and opened his eyes in hell. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. Calvary is about you being absent from the body and present with the Lord. That's what God wants. God wants you to believe on His Son to be saved. God is long-suffering. And yet, if you die without Jesus Christ, you will die and open your eyes in a place called hell. And that's not a popular message today. That's not even popular in the churches today. But because I don't speak about hell does not make it not so. It's amazing what God has done for us and what we do to return the favor by not doing what He told us to do. Read you what Jesus had to say to his disciples out of Matthew 10. I'm just trying to figure out where to start. And whosoever shall not receive you, nor hear your words, when ye depart out of that house or city, shake off the dust of your feet. Then I say unto you, it shall be more tolerable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah in the day of judgment than for that city. Behold, I send, send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. Be ye therefore wise as serpents, and harmless as doves. But beware of men, for they will deliver you up to the councils, and they shall scourge you in the synagogue. Ye shall be brought before governors and kings for my sake. For the testimony against them and the Gentiles. But when they deliver you, take no thought on how what ye shall speak. For it shall be given you in that same hour what ye shall speak. For it is not ye that speak, but the Spirit of the Father which speaketh in you. Brother shall, brother shall deliver up brother to death, the father the child. The children shall rise against their parents and cause them to be put to death. Ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. Jesus already told you you wouldn't like the message. And it's a shame that you Christians come up and say, I don't like that. That's not what I was looking for, but this is what I was looking for. When we're speaking about hell and Jesus Christ, Matthew 10, verse 28, Fear not they 
which can kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Ladies and gentlemen, we Christians, that was the word of Jesus Christ out of his mouth. He spoke about hell. He spoke about death, the body, being killed. And yet he spoke about that eternal part of us, the soul. Your body may die, but your soul may go to hell. Who are you to fear? According to Jesus Christ, Matthew 10, you are to be fearing the one that will take your soul and put it into hell. How do I get out of that? Where's the invitation? Week after week. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Acts 16.31 God can take your soul and put it into hell, but yet God can take your soul that believes in the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. But you've got to do something. Jesus Christ has already done what needed to be done to get out of hell. You've got to believe. You've got to repent. You've got to ask God to save your soul. Isaiah 1. God speaking. Isaiah 1.18. God is speaking. Come now. Not tomorrow. But come now, right now. Drop your watermelon. Stop your browsing. Come now. And let us reason together. That's you and God. Us. You coming to God and reasoning with God over the Bible. It's where we will take a Bible and show you who you are in the eyes of God. Because you may have a different opinion of yourself than what God has for you. I would hate to have you think that you're good when the Bible says there is none good, no, not one. And yet God says, come now. You and Him reasoning together with the Word of God. Come now, let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your, skin, your sins be as scarlet. That's the main problem. Your problem is you have sin. The wages of sin is death. A doctor cannot heal your sin condition. Preacher cannot take care of your sin. Don't bring your sins to me. Bring them to Jesus and have Him wash you of your sins. I'll just show you how and what you need to do. I can't do nothing. A priest 
could not do anything with your sins. But the one that died upon Calvary's hill can wash you of your sins. For it says, Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. You can deal with today the main, only cause of death. Today, sin. All have sinned. That sin is going to have you to die. The wages of sin is death. That sin in God's eyes is very bright. Though your sins be as scarlet. So your problem is a sin problem. And there's only one cure. The Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. Now if you allow the Lamb to take away the sin, the Lord Jesus Christ, to wash you of your sins, and you die, you'll be absent from the body and present with the Lord. If you will not come to the Lamb, which take away the sin of the world, you will die, and you will open up your eyes in a place called hell. And God is not willing that any should perish. In Revelation 20, Revelation 20. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Is that really a place you would like to go? Are you really to gamble your soul to say that the Bible is not real? And to wake up one day and find out it is real? Are you willing to take that eternal spot of you and say, it's just a book. There is no God. I've got my religion. If this book is true, and it is, and if Jesus Christ is the truth, and He is, and there's no lie in God, and there isn't, without Jesus Christ, life is hell. With Jesus Christ, you're saved. You look forward to the blessed hope. And you know what? If you're saved, and the Lord doesn't tarry, you may not see death. There's coming a day that Jesus Christ is coming for His church. That may be now. That may be tomorrow. Next week, next month, next year. Next century. But Jesus is coming. And those that are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them that have slept in the clouds. This 
too many sugary preachers out there letting people go to hell. I'm not going to, I'm going to tell you what the gospel is. You haven't read the Bible and see what Jesus done. I'll tell you what he's done. He died upon that cross according to the scripture. They buried him. And he arose, arose again the third day according to the scripture. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. That simple. That easy. Even a child can do it. And believing on the Lord Jesus Christ will change your destination at death. You will not enter into the gates of hell. When you believe on Jesus Christ as your Savior. And you're not even going to enter the gates of heaven. Now, if you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, the Bible says when you die, to be absent from the body, present with the Lord. You're right there with God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ at His right hand, if you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved.